So last week we read about uh, Achan's sin. We're going to jump ahead a couple of chapters. You can go back and read those about uh, the battle with Ai. Once they got things straightened back out, they went after Ai again, the city of Ai, and they totally destroyed it. Then they uh, encountered another group they had to deal with, and then there was a group of uh, Gideonites that uh, they encountered, but they had heard about what happened at Ai, and they made a kind of a treaty with um, Joshua. And so Joshua was good with that. And some of the people grumbled about it, but Joshua said, hey, knock it off. We made a vow, and we will keep the vow that we have made with them. And so we come to the 10th um, chapter. <coughs> And this is good here. Now Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had taken Ai and totally destroyed it. Doing to Ai its, and its king as he had done to Jericho and its king. And that the people of Gibeon had made a treaty of peace with Israel and had become their allies. He and his people were very much alarmed at this because Gibeon was an important city, like one of the royal cities. It was larger than Ai, and all its men were good fighting. So Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, appealed to, and I'm going to stop there because it just gets a little bored in the reading. He appealed to four other kings, and he says to them, listen, these guys are for real. And they're coming toward us. And they're going to destroy us. So before they can get here, let's attack Gibeon. And we'll destroy them. Because with you four guys, we are mightier and we are stronger. And we'll take them down. That's a very paraphrase. Now, I found it interesting that Zedek was the king over Jerusalem. The only other time we had heard of Jerusalem mentioned in the Old Testament uh, came from Abraham. When Abraham went and offered a sacrifice to Melchizedek. Melchizedek was the king and priest <coughs> of Salem. It's what it was titled then, but Salem is the same city. So this guy has come over, and he's taken over the kingdom, and he's going after Gibeon. Verse 7, uh, I'm sorry, verse 6. The Gibeonites then sent word to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal, Do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us. Help us, because all the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all his best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hands. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. <clears throat> Let me point out something here that maybe we haven't thought about before. Notice that he doesn't say, if he was speaking Southern, he didn't say y'all. Okay? He doesn't say that he's given them or they'll be with, able to withstand y'all. What he says is they will not be able to withstand you. They say, what's that point? What's the point? Throughout the scriptures, Old and New Testament, I believe I'm safe on this. God honors the one that is anointed to speak for him. He anoints the man and the woman who speak for him. 
So you could be a man or a woman of God and there could be 50 people around you who didn't believe and he will honor you because you're anointed from him. Amen. See, we don't preach a lot. We don't talk a lot today about the anointing. But the New Testament says, Paul says, you have an anointing on you from the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. So I don't know what you've ever thought before, but there's anointing on someone who is engaged in ministry. God's hand, if you're doing God's will, God's hand on, is on you, and there's power there. If you're the parent in a family unit, <coughs> because, excuse me, a little bit of cold this morning. Um, I had it all week. Um, if you're a parent over a family, God has ordained you for that. You've been anointed to take care of that family. So sometimes a man or a woman who's anointed from God has to do what is best, not what is favorable. Sometimes you have to make decisions. And you have to say, no, no, you're not going to do that. Or yes, you can do that. That doesn't come by your authority because you're such a wonderful parent. Because let's be honest, none of us got a manual with that job. It didn't come with any instructions. But yet the responsibility is placed on us by God. See, this is one of the arguments that gets lost in the church when we start talking about other kinds of marriages. When you're a parent, you're anointed by God. If you're a Christian parent, you are most definitely anointed by God and covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So therefore, you have a responsibility. Not to be perfect, but to stand in your anointing. We're not always going to like the decision. No, uh, uh, in, in, in the situation here, in, in the fellowship here. Sandy and I have an anointing from God. Amen? Amen. <laughs> they said that a little reluctantly. <laughs> does that mean we don't make mistakes? Of course it does. Not. <laughs> but we feel a, 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 a sense of burden and a sense of responsibility. Because God has said, okay, if you're going to stand up and lead, you're going to be accountable. Sometimes we're not. Sometimes we fail and we have to ask God's direction. But nobody voted, for those of you that are new with us or visiting with us, nobody voted on us being the pastors. And no, we're not going to vote. <laughs> but people, you faithfully said amen. amen. And we are blessed because of that. We are deeply blessed because of that. <coughs> After an all night, so Joshua is the guy. Joshua's the guy. And we're going to see something in a minute that's going to blow your socks off. After an all night march from Gilgal, Joshua took up took them by surprise. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel. So Joshua and the Israelites defeated them completely at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road up to Beth Horon and cut them down all the way to Ezekiah and Machadiah. As they fled before Israel on the road down from Beth Horon to Ezekiah, the Lord hurled large hailstones on them. <laughs> and more of them died from the hail than were killed by the sword of all the Israelites. 
God said, I got this. Boom. And the hailstones fell. Now, I don't know if you've ever been out in a hailstone storm. We had one in Winter Park one time <coughs> that ripped convertible tops off, broke glass. It, seriously, <coughs> it was about the size of a baseball. They were falling so hard. And this, when it first started, this lady said, Barry, would you go get my car? And being the gentleman that I am, I said, are you out of your mind? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> I said, sure, give me your key. I took about five steps out that, ding, 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 ding. I was like, oh. I read back. I said, you know yourself. <laughs> I ain't going out there. It broke windows. It broke windshields. It, it, I mean, it was crazy. Now, God dropped such large hailstones that it crushed them. <clears throat> but that ain't the main point. That's pretty cool. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, listen to this. Sun stand still over Gibeon, and you move over the valley of Ajon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nations avenged itself on its enemies. As is written in the book of Joshua, Joshua, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since. A day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel then Joshua returned with all of Israel to the camp in Gilgal. <laughs> when I read that for the first time, two things happened. One, I thought, how ridiculous is my faith? <clears throat> and the second was what a man Joshua was. I want you to get this. Let me read it again. Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Son, stand still. See, if we were praying that prayer, our prayer would be, Lord, don't let anybody get hurt. Lord, give us travel and mercies. Lord, could you help us overcome <clears throat> this apparent difficulty? Dear Lord, we thank you for that for which we are about to receive. Joshua said, he doesn't ask the Lord. He tells the Lord. <clears throat> Read it again. Read it carefully. He doesn't say, oh, Lord, please. Could you just slow the sun down? Just a little bit. He says, sun, stand still. There's not a person in this room that would have come up with that prayer request. None of us. I don't believe, now maybe there's somebody here with that big faith, but I'm telling you, I'm not him. I would have never thought about that. Joshua was pressing the battle. And what he saw was, we're about to run out of daylight. And we've got to complete this today. So he called a committee meeting. And they tried to figure out ways in which
which they could extend the battle. Now, you know, someone at the board meeting said, let's get a good night's sleep. We'll go at them again tomorrow. I'm hungry. I want something to eat. Get a good night's rest. And it's comfortable here. And after a while, God dropped hell today. He'll, do, he'll take care of us tomorrow. Our faith is God will take care of us tomorrow. And we think that's big faith. This faith is so big, he says, son, stand still. Stand still. And he did. Not only did he tell the sun to stand still, but he told the moon, you stop right there. Don't move. Now, I'm going to let my imagination run a little bit here. Because that's what I do. <clears throat> what was God's reaction in heaven? What do you think God did when he said that? I got a feeling God went, what did he say? <laughs> what? <clears throat> Jesus, go get the Holy Spirit. Y'all come here. Thank you. I got something that ain't going to help. <laughs> That's going to come in here. Satan, get away. I got to finish this. <laughs> it's loving. Come here. Grab Michael and, and, and get Gabriel. Y'all come here. Look what this fool asked. <laughs> he, <clears throat> he's asking me to stop the sun. Well, Dad, it's not like you can't do it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He created the heavens and the earth. He put them in motion. I'm thinking if he put them in motion, he can stop them. Now I've heard some people say, well, this never could have happened because it would create chaos in the cosmos. God created that too. What? <laughs> what? 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 <clears throat> Let's see, he spoke things into existence. I think he can say stop. Stop. But you see, our faith ain't that big. My faith ain't that big. I want my faith to be that big. Because there are moments in my life where there are sun-stopping moments for us. There are moments that we haven't acquired. There are moments we haven't laid hands on. There are things down the road for us. And we've got to develop that kind of faith. That kind of faith that makes God go, whoa, 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 whoa. Do you hear that? Did you hear that? And we pray, God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food. It's cute when it comes from Brendan. It's not, not so cute when it comes from adults. Because God's saying to us, how big, how awesome, how powerful do you really think I am? It says that it hasn't happened since or before. <clears throat> but I believe God's way to unleash things on us. We have not because we ask not. Joshua wasn't bound by that. He wasn't bound by the nonsense of committee and church and board meetings. He had seen the hand of God. He knew what God could do, not what he couldn't do. And who are we that God should listen to us? He listened to Joshua. I think God had to be blown away this day when he says, stop the sun. God says, yeah, stop it. Do you think anybody wanted to mess with Joshua after this day? I'm here to tell you they did. They didn't mess with him anymore. When a group of people said, hey, let's go down there and kick their tail, they thought, oh, no, 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 he's got a big God. Big 
God. And some way, some how, some motivation that has to move in us that says our God thinks so far out of the box he can't see the box. And if God's in a box, it's because we put him there. We've limited what he can do by saying what he can't do. I, I just don't think, you know, I just, I just, I mean, he's got more important people to take care of than me. Let me explain how important you are. We all know that we're fearfully and wonderfully made, amen? amen? Let me tell you how important you are. And you better take this to your very core of your spiritual being. You need to understand this, that it never moves from you. You are so important to God, if you were the only one that accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He still would have come and died for you. Yes. You! You! He sent His Son to die for you! It doesn't get any bigger than that. And if you're a child of His, you have every right, you are entitled to everything in heaven to stand before Him and say, God, stop the sun. And let me stand in the victory. But we have limited God because our faith refuses to accept God and His Word. And it's a faith issue. It's nothing else. You pray for something and you expect to get it and lo and behold, God gives it to you and I'll be if we don't all say, well, I don't know how that happens. <laughs> wow, wasn't that a funny coincidence? <laughs> no, it wasn't a coincidence. You asked for it. And God gave it to you. He ain't just messing with you. You say, wait a minute, Barry. Are you telling me I can pray for something so ridiculous that God will bring it to me as ridiculous as it may be? I'm going to say amen. Because the other end of you have not because you ask not is this. For when you pray, you pray from a selfish motive. If you're praying from a selfish motive, you might not get that. But if you're praying from a motive that says, and I'll give glory to God, look out, look out, look out what's God going to do. I said back several weeks ago that in August I begin to see this place come up. I'm still standing on that. I ain't moving. I'm standing right there. I don't care if it happens in September. I'm still saying God's going to open the back door and people are going to come find him at Freedom Community Church. That's my prayer. I'm standing on it. I ain't letting go of it. It ain't about me. It ain't about you. It's about bringing glory to God. We're going to find ways to touch this community. We're going to step out of our shadow and stand in the light of the S-O-N. And we're going to say, son, stand still while God moves. And people are going to say in the future, somewhere down the road, people are going to say, how did that happen with that group? <laughs> that group's crazy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. No, 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 man. That group's crazy in love with God. Paul says, if I'm a fool, I'll be a fool for God. You can say whatever you want to, but watch God work. This is where we've got to come to. This is where God has taken us. And I believe we're coming there. I believe the journey that freedom has had has been taking us to the faith place of saying to the Son, stand still. <clears throat> My hope and my faith has been a little bit rekindled. I watched the debate. <clears throat> I didn't see it for a couple of days. I was over here and I couldn't pick it up. And 
Sandy taped it for me, and when I got home, I watched it. And I saw something I didn't think I'd ever see. And I mean, it must have been driving some people crazy. But when they asked that question about praying to God and asking God to help in the way some of them men answered, I went, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> Holy cow. We got people who can actually seek God's direction. Amen. If I wasn't sitting down, I'd have had to. <laughs> but that's not what gets it done. I don't care. I don't care about yet. Yeah, what I care about is God being restored back to the honor and glory that he needs to be. That's what I care about. This nation was blessed. This nation continued to be blessed. There are blessings happening in this nation today because of you, because of Christian people who are praying, who are seeking God's direction, and God saying, I'm not leaving my children all alone. I'm not leaving my children abandoned. I'm going to lift them up. Lord, let the sun stop over America today. Let it stand still so the church can rise up, so we can say no. No, 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 we will not go that way anymore. You will not hear from us God ever being booed. But you will hear God celebrated. Amen. And we will glorify him again. And we will sing again. Notice that it said in, in, in the company, <coughs> excuse me, in the company, it's not going to help. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's not here, it's here. Uh, uh, he says uh, to them, it was in the company of Israel. That Joshua said that. Joshua didn't get alone in the bushes and say, oh God, could you? He said it in front of everybody. Amen. Everybody heard him say that. <coughs> Except the Baptists that were on the back row. <laughs> I'm just playing. Just playing. They said, what did he say? Uh, he said for the sun to stand still. What? He said, son, stand still. Did it work? Yeah. Son ain't moving. Better get out some sunblock. We're going to be here for a while. For a full day, the sun didn't move. For a full day, the sun stood still. It didn't move. So that they could finish the battle. Brothers and sisters, you are in a battle every day. Every day your feet hit the floor, you are in a battle. Satan is trying to get you. He's trying to defeat you. He's doing everything in his power to overcome you. But God has set the sun to stand still in your life. He's saying, just trust me. Just pray. Just seek me. Ask me. It's sort of like the prayer in, a, I believe it's in Malachi, where God's talking about bringing the offering to uh, the storeroom, and God says this. He says, I will open up a window and pour out such a blessing on you, you will not be able to, to withstand it. He says, test me in this. It's one of the few places that God says to the people, test me. You think I won't bless you? You think I won't open up my storehouse? How about testing me? And then we have people who stand in the pulpit and teach, you're not supposed to test God. In his blessings, he says, test me. Prove me wrong. You bring your tithe and I'll pour out a blessing. I will show you that you can't even begin to give what I can give. And on this day, on this day, Joshua didn't test the Lord. He stood in the glory of the Lord. He said, my God, my God, my God is so big. Watch this. 
So when you leave here today, don't you walk out of here. Don't you face another day going, well, I hope God. Don't you ever have another day like that. You have a day that says God will. I'm going to pray such crazy things that God's going to make the sun stand still. And remember I said to you before, sometimes the, you know, it's right before you fall off the cliff that God says, ah, wait, I got you. I got you. How must do you trust me? Abraham had the knife drawn and it says the angel stayed his hand. What that means is he was coming down. He was coming down on Isaac. When the angel stayed his hand. In Hebrews it says, Hebrews 11 says, For Abraham reasoned that even if he sacrificed Isaac, God would raise him back up. Why? Because God promised through him all the nations would be blessed. Woo! Don't you feel like your faith sometimes just a little small? You know? We've seen him work, Amen. We've seen him rattle the roof. And we'll continue to see that happen if we will but have the big faith that stands so large outside ourselves. Begin to do something that's so crazy. Think in ways that's so crazy that it doesn't make sense to anybody but you and God. God, you give me this, I'm going to give you that. I'm going I'm to test you here. Don't, don't, don't pray for a moped when you can have a Rolls Royce. I, don't give me that. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to be humble here. I think Joshua was pretty humble. What happened? Because don't you know Joshua went, woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Wow. Let's go. Let's go. The battle's ours. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. And it's ours. The battle is ours. The victory's already been won. It's already been secured. Jesus Christ has already won. We are triumphant in Him. Not in ourselves, but in Him. We get to march in the glory. We get to share in the victory. My faith cannot be stopped any longer. It's got to grow. It's got to go. I am no longer content <clears throat> with just being content. I want to see the mighty hand of God. I want us to be five years from now looking back and going, Phew, you know what? Remember when we were just... Fire needs to be lit. And I'm not talking about bringing people, listen to me, I'm not talking about bringing people to church. I'm talking about winning people to Jesus Christ. That's our goal. That's what we're after. We fill it with people who are coming to Jesus Christ. That's what we need to focus on. The people that are lost, the people that are dying, the people that are going to hell that never know what you and I know in Christ. The joy that is in Him. Let's spread the word. Let's go forth. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to touch people and bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in to the kingdom which His Son died for and was raised. That's the glory we want to stand in, brothers and sisters. We no longer want to be content. Amen? We no longer want to be content. We want to see God unleash His presence. Praise Him. <clears throat> now, when you're praying and when you're seeking God, please understand that in the process, God can bring some journey to you. Like, I'm not saying that a moped's a bad thing. If you have no transportation, a moped's a pretty good thing. I'm not saying God doesn't send stuff to us that, you know, it don't all have to be right off the showroom floor. I'm just saying God blesses us with stuff that we don't even see it coming. We're thinking this, and God's bringing this. And it may not be, you know, right to, well, I really wanted that. 
We started in the casino. And we were glad to be there, amen? After a while, we weren't so glad to be there. Felt like we were in a 40-year wandering. Take it down, putting up. Take it down, putting up. Take it down, putting up. Joe and him, man. Look where God brought us. Amen. What's the next one going to look like? Huh? Because we're just walking through. We're just walking through. We ain't got to the promised land yet. We're just occupying space. But look what God did. We didn't say he was going to be able to do it. We think, I don't know how we're going to do that. We stepped out. God's blessed. And God's blessed. What's he going to do next? Oh, I want to be around when he does the next thing. Don't you? I want to be around when he does the next thing. Well, he's begun today to do the next thing. The next thing he's begun today. Because our prayers will no longer be just little bitty things. We're going to ask God to make the sun stand still. <laughs> Amen? Amen? If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's where you start. Right there. We all go, we all come to God through the same vehicle, and that is Jesus Christ. The door which we pass through. If you are in Christ, I want you to spend some time this week thinking about how small your faith is. And how big you want it to be. <coughs> you don't get there overnight. But you get there. Our problem and the problem with the church of Jesus Christ, the universal body, is we've stopped imagining. We've stopped seeing the sun stand still. We've become content. As one preacher put it, the church is no longer standing on the promises, they're sitting on the premises. And that's true. There's way too many church goers sitting on them. Friends, not today. Not today. Pray that God will open your mind to see big things for Him. Amen. Great things for Him. That you can lay hold of. And then you can say, Woo! That was a sun standing still moment. Amen? Amen. Let that be our prayer today as we stand and as we sing. David was a man of God's own heart, and he knew the power of the anointing. And uh, he spoke unto his warriors about Saul, and they would say, why don't you go kill Saul? And David said, you will not lay your hand on God's anointing. Each and every one of you out here has been touched in one way or another by this community, by this church. And the anointing of Jesus Christ is on you. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. And there can never be a more beautiful you. <laughs>